Well, the National Road Safety Authority is planning a reconstruction of the accident scene at the uh, of the Chichire accident to aid in the prevention of future accidents there. My colleague Manuel Kranting was out and about getting the thoughts of players in the industry on reasons why the accidents keep recurring and perhaps why, how they think we can address this problem. On the road, mm. that break down. Break down vehicles and at times where the actual accident sports happens is vehicles pass by the side of the roads loading and break down vehicles. In case this... Uh, the towing system. That towing system that was brought up some time ago from pres former President John Ajekunku first time and things have gone on well and we are paying this maybe our 20 cities in addition to our roadworthy and there's a breakdown and you give a call definitely they will come and tow the vehicle by the roadside or on the road. It is in place. For instance, the hotspots between Tichemante and Chichire. That's normally... And Chichire is, is the place we had the, 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 the accident yesterday. Yeah, and Chichire, we've lost a driver there where there was a mechanical fault from a vehicle from Accra going to Kumasi. And our driver was coming from Mampon. He saw the vehicle coming upon him, so he tried to swerve. But there were parked vehicles beside. So he couldn't go off the road for the vehicle and he had to lose his life. Why? So we are seeing why you did this. Because when you are not able to buy new one, I will acquire new one. So she's telling me that um, there is a situation of the road, essentially um, talking about um, um, the road not being a dual carriage. But that particular Eastern Corridor Road, uh, you know, has been in the books for long, and she's complaining about the head-on collision, which as a result of the fact that um, the roads are not dualized, and and so you just run into um, um, you know a forthcoming vehicle most of the time So let's get on Zoom now. We have Nanaya Kwada, who is with the Bureau of Public Safety, joining me. Nanaya, it's been a while. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Um, uh, we've seen your report, uh, your report on safety, and two key things that are in the top uh, or are at the top: road accident and murders or manslaughter happens to be, you know, at the top of the key safety or security issues we have in this country. And we've just dealt, we've just done about two of those stories right now. From where you sit, as we continue to talk about this, is there a solution in sight at all? Um, I believe, good afternoon, um, I believe your question should be, is there an end in sight? Certainly, there is a solution. 
but as to whether the people in charge of affairs are ready to implement the solutions that will bring an end to this is the bigger is the bigger question mm. Mm. It, we'll talk about the solutions let's just for those who have not seen this report try and look at it briefly and and and, and to let people understand what we're dealing with here so you you looked at january between january to june which is pretty short but the things that you found so you found that road accident account for what about 52 percent yes well um what we got between January and end of June this year, we observed that <clears throat> if you compare the statistics for this half year against the statistics of um, last year, half year, it has incidents of road crashes has increased by over 40%. We then looked at the casualties. We also realized that the casualties, both their injuries, cumulatively or in total, has also increased by over 20%. And this has been the trend since 2015 when we began this exercise. Year on year, period after period, the statistics keep going up. And that is what led us to conclude in the beginning of the year that our roads were the most dangerous place to be. Today, the trend hasn't changed. Today, road crashes is the leading cause of accidental deaths in Ghana today. And so you also touched on, um, we'll come back to the road accident, but you also touched on murders, on manslaughter. Uh, there's a bit that I don't understand and I'd like for you to elaborate a bit. But take us through what you found as far as the murders, manslaughter, reported deaths, uh, etc. What you found there and what it means to us. Okay. We, we also realized when we, in the report, we have, uh, when we release the full report, hopefully by end of next week, you understand that we have violent crime category. Mm -hmm. And under violent crime category, that's where murder, manslaughter, um, suicide, um, assault, aggravated assault, and all those things fall. We observed that in that category, murder and manslaughter cases were in the lead. We observed that if the same period this year, if you just oppose it against the same period last year, it has murder and manslaughter cases constituted 30% of all violent crime cases, mm -hmm. as against 19% of pre in, previous, in the previous year. Yeah. So this has almost doubled. And we think that there is a need for us to, as a country, to begin to put a lot more effort in how we prosecute issues of murder. We realize that nearly, I mean, the commission of crime, violent crime, we the kind of tools people were using to commit violent crime. Also, the gun input in there had also increased by over 20%, I mean, as against last year. So the people who are committing such crimes, what we gathered was that they were getting bolder and bolder. And whereas if previously you will find them possessing the guns and not, guns and not using it, now, they do not only possess those guns and machetes as instruments of intimidation, but they will actually use those um, tools if they are challenged. And so they are becoming more lethal in their endeavors or in their practice. Hmm. More lethal gun use. Did you factor in um, anything about the registration processes and the, um, the gun shots we had with, with the registration process, the violence that characterize some of it? Well, um, you know that we are looking at 10 portals, of which I think my joint line is one of the portals. So once the story comes in, there is an injury, there is a death, there is a source of worry. It causes public civil disturbance. That right. story will be locked. Okay. And sub um, subsequently, when there are any casualties, that one will be locked as well, pending... Okay 
validation. And so I believe that um, while I cannot tell you which story was um, logged and which story was not logged, I believe that um, gun incidents at the registration center might have been locked in our uh, data. Mm. Let's talk, uh, take a look. This, the part that I didn't really quite get was um, the death count. There's something written as death count increased by 26%, and then there is a bit that says reported cases increased by 3%. Do you want to elaborate a bit on that? I don't really get it. Okay. Um, I believe a reported cases actually decreased by 3%. Now, there are violent crime cases that may involve multiple deaths. Okay. So just so people will understand, you won't go to town so violent crime cases have decreased, it has decreased. We want to let people understand that whilst case by case basis, if you compare half year this year to half year in 2019, the cases may have decreased. That is to say if we had like 68 crime cases in previous year, we now have uh, maybe 65 cases. But we are not out of the woods yet. Mm. The number of deaths that these um, 50 lesser cases recorded far outnumbers the number of deaths that we recorded in previous years. And that's what we meant by death count. So even though violent crime, reported violent crime cases had decreased by 3%, the death counts had increased by as much as 26%, which is why we concluded that people perpetrating violent crime are no longer using their tools as tools of intimidation, but they are actually using it and using it not on um, one person or two, but they are using it on multiple uh, victims. I see. No, let, let's... So you could have one violent crime that produces multiple casualties. Okay. Wrap up on the summary of the reports for me with suicide and with the suicide, uh, I want to find out what population you used and whether there are specific things that account for the number, the, the percentage of suicide. You're looking at 66% increase in suicide. Yes, absolutely. And if you know the BPS watch uh, report is largely based on what um, we uh, we monitor from the various portals, the 10 selected portals. Mm. And um, in previous year, January to June, we monitored a number of suicide cases that were reported. And yesterday I was in a webinar by the Ghana Psychology Association. I know they are trying to get suicide decriminalized, but for now, it's a criminal offense and it's a violent crime. And so it falls in our category. What we did, what we monitored for previous year, what we monitored for this year, showed an increase in reportage of 66%. So if fewer reports were coming in, which means fewer cases of suicide were occurring, now it has increased. And the increase, we estimate it to be 66%, at least by okay. the data that we have gathered from these 10 portals. Okay. Let's wrap up this conversation and back to the accidents that have been recorded. Just yesterday, 23 people have died on our roads. And this is a conversation I've had several times, or sometimes I run out of questions, honestly. Run out of questions as to what to even ask, what to even say. But I have a report on that accident that occurred yesterday. And it, it, it makes, you know, it writes a few things. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to find more. First of all, it indicates that the driver of the trailer and the assistants cannot be found uh, when they got to the accident scene. But then it also summarizes what ought to be done. And I think it's more like a recommendation. I don't know if you have seen the report, this particular uh, report. A report from where? The, it's a report from um, the National Road Safety Authority. It's, it's called the Preliminary Crash Report. So what they found essentially... No, we haven't cited that report. We uh, have not cited it. So uh, okay. So essentially talks about the immediate action that was taken. And I'll just read that to you um, briefly. So it talks about the vehicles that were involved. Um, a trailer carrying flour 
from Burkina Faso to Accra, and then it crashed with a Kia ground bed, um, and then uh, there was also a, a, a hit on an STC bar, so three vehicles involved. The immediate action taken was that the Suhum District MTTD secured the scene. They paved way for the road safety people with the help of fire service to clear the road for free flow of traffic, and the injured were taken to hospital. They say that the team followed up to the police station and they couldn't find the, the, the driver of the, of the bus. Um, I just want to take your thoughts on it after I have read, you know, uh, there's a part that was recommending something. I'll find that. But so far, what do you make of, of, of this, despite all the conversations that we've had? Are these things just really inevitable or are we still doing something wrong? Well, um, I, let me commend the National Road Safety Authority um, for rising up this quickly to the occasion. Um, I know the new road safety bill gives them such authority and such mandate to issue some of these, um, you know, preliminary reports. Mm. Um, I mean, I think we should commend them. That said, um, I think the report lacks a few more details that should have been in this preliminary report. Um, the fact that the vehicle um, is a Burkinabi um, registered vehicle, mm. or is it Ghanaian vehicle bound for Burkina Faso? If it is a Burkina Faso registered vehicle, one would expect that in this preliminary report, at least if we cannot find the driver, we should have the driver's name in there possibly his picture, no matter how mm. um, blurred it would be. Well, what we, we have, have here, because just, this, say, just because, because you say you haven't seen the report, let me help you with this. What we have here is a car number. So the car number is uh, 11JL6112. That doesn't sound Ghanaian to me. doesn't look Ghanaian to me. Plus, that's not a Ghanaian plate. Yeah. That's not a Ghanaian plate. So okay. we should know... And um, my producers... This... Sorry, my producers are just hinting me also that the driver has been arrested. Thank God. Right. Thank God. And I think that, that's really swift. And so from what um, the National Risk Safety Authority... I think we should commend the Ghana Police Service because who are really going to descend heavily on them. Because aside the, the incident involving Ghanaian lives, it bothers on national security. 24 hours if we could not locate a driver of a, a foreign vehicle that has crossed into our territory. We cannot trace the, the driver. We cannot trace even his identity. That will be very, very disturbing. And so mm -hmm. let me commend the police for such a swift action. Okay. Um, I would want us to also, once we get copies or we cite this report, whatever we have to say on it, we mm -hmm. will. But for now, I think that the Road Safety Authority and the Ghana Police Service have really got on our better side. Very well. I'll just end with this by saying that the report says that the Suhum and Sawum Highway should be dualized. It sounds like a, it, it says remarks, but of course it's more like a recommendation that's been made by the person who put together this report, who is Abdullah Bawa Gamsa. And uh, hopefully in your advocacy work, this is something that you want to push uh, as a recommendation. Usually these recommendations will just get stuck on the paper, but it's up to us to take it up and make sure that it is done. I'm worried with um, recommendations that come in, you know, in such manner is that it often takes the whole discussion out of um, appropriate context. Mm. Because 15 people died, 23 people, um, 15 people rising to 23 people are dead. We should be looking at root causes. We should be looking at significant causes that when we eliminate we can save lives than moving in into dualization or assuming that even the government decide that I want to go into dualization today. It's going to take us several months. Mm -hmm. But if we decide that we are going to enforce the laws on speeding today, it takes effect now. And that is what we have said since time immemorial, that if we can tackle excessive speeding on our roads, we can more than half the fatalities, the casualties in no time. And once we have half the casualties, then we can move on and look at things about road engineering and all that. 
So without due respect, while I respect the report, I don't think that this is the time we should be talking about dualization of roads. Right. What has happened to our spot farming system? What has happened? There are very low hanging fruits that can take off today. And those are the things we want the state to begin to take action. Yeah. It hurts so much that year on year, people like us will come and sit on radio and television and be repeating ourselves yeah. when the solutions are there. I get you. And I get that feeling all the time. We as journalists have to report the issues over and over again. It does get tiring, but we keep going. We'll see how it goes. Nanaya, thank you so much for your time. Nanaya uh, Akwada is with the